you remember that John recorded a special teaching technique called truly, truly, I say unto you, or the old King James, verily, verily. And uh, he taught uh, 25 of these in the book of John, 25 of them. Um, and, and he made a special effort uh, to, to identify that. And so we're looking at the, we're, we've been in the upper room. He did seven of these in the upper room discourse. That's the Last Supper at the Last Supper. That would be from John 13 through 17. And in John 16, this is the seventh or the last given at the Last Supper. When he leaves the Last Supper, then he's going to go to Gethsemane, and then he's going through trials and crucifixion, burial and resurrection. So here we are, and we're looking at verse uh, 23 and 24 because we've already done. Um, in chapter 16, there was one in 20, and now in 23. Uh, verse 23, and in that day you will ask me no questions. Truly, truly, I say to you, if you shall ask the Father for anything, he will give it to you in my name. Until now, you have asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. And so we're looking at, we, when you read that, you understand that from our standpoint in the church age, we look back to this and we see that, that, that he's talking about prayer. He's talking about prayer. Uh, and he's making a difference here between when I was with you, uh, you never asked for anything in my name. Did you notice that? Until now, up to now, you've never asked me for anything in my name. But... Watch this now, it, but he says, until now you've asked for nothing. See, he started, and in that day you will ask me no questions. Truly I say to you, if you shall ask the Father for anything, I will give it to you in my name. Up to now, you've asked nothing. But in that day, see, he's, he's introduced to us uh, a new, listen to me now, this is important for your life. He's offered you to understand that in the church age, under the new covenant church age in which you and I live. He has introduced to us a new method to prayer, and boy, you'd better learn it, or your prayers are kaput. But if you will understand the new method, the new method that he introduced to prayer to his disciples, you will have powerful, a powerful, effective prayer life in this day in which you and I live. So after a word of prayer, we're going to come, we're going to take a look at this because if you want to, listen, who doesn't have some sort of a prayer life? And listen, if you have any stability spiritually in your life that other people are aware of, they're going to come to you and ask for, for you to pray for them. Right? They, they, that, that's, that's a given. And you need to have the confidence that you know how to have an effective prayer life to get the job done when they come. And I'm going to teach that to you today, but we're going to have a word of prayer first. First of all, I want to mention a couple of things. Uh, most of you are familiar with Donna Hall. Donna Hall's, I believe his mother has died, um, but th she doesn't live here. She lives Alex City. So, but we need to pray for that family uh, and uh, that recovery. Uh, adjusting, and I talked to Bill Summerall yesterday, and we're just now looking at hours. We're not looking at days. We're not looking at weeks. We're looking at hours now, and um, so that family needs it, needs our prayer, the, the people that are with us, and, and he says, if you will just continue to pray for dying grace, that he would be so appreciative of that, uh, so um, uh, so let's go to the word of prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. You know the classroom etiquette to make sure there's no unconfessed sin in your life. And you take care of that according to 1 John 1, 9. It, God says, if you confess your sin, you name, cite it. 
You do it in silence. You do it through your priesthood of 1 Peter 2. You're a believer priest in this dispensation. And when you confess it, he said, I will forgive you and I will cleanse you. And that allow the indwelling Holy Spirit to teach you the truth of the word of God. I'm going to give you that moment. Father, we're thankful that we have the authority, all authority, connected with Jesus Christ. Who has the power of whatever is necessary to get the prayer completed in a life of a person that we have access to that power, to that throne of authority. And so we lift Donna Hall and that family to you in the passing of a mama. We understand that one. And uh, this is only the beginning stage of adjusting without the, lo with the, the loss of this one. We pray for the Simrels. Um, we pray for Linda that you would give her dying grace. Father, make that exit pleasant to the people around her. We know you will make it pleasant to her because that's, that's what eternal life is all about. But to be able to make it in such a way that it brings comfort to the family in that exit would be wonderful on that side of it. So we lift that. We also pray for Rick Broadhead today, Father. He come home from the mission trip sick uh, and, uh, and not able to get over the... So we, we ask for wisdom with the medical staff that they give great, clear examinations and, and they take everything into consideration. And we pray, Father, for thy divine intervention. We pray, Father, we know that no matter what it is, we know that you have the antidote. And we're, we're asking for that today. We're asking you to give him that even in this very hour, Father, of your healing power upon his life in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in this passage, <laughs> this is, we have one more in the book of John uh, that the next time we gather, I guess it'll be probably 31st as far as I'll be in the pulpit. And I will cover that. That will be the last one. And I'm going to tell you the last one. He really saved the last one to be in chapter 21. And boy, is it a powerful one. And it's out of the, it's outside the box, as we say. So that'll be an exciting. But this, here is a wonderful one that will affect every person in this room's life today in that Jesus introduced a new method to prayer in the seventh and the final message that he brought from the upper room discourse. Notice he said, in that day, you will not question me about anything. Truly, truly, I say to you, and that's our that's our key to get a messianic doctrine, and here it is, a new method to prayer. If you ask the Father for anything in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you've asked for nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and here's why. Here is why prayer answer, prayers answered are important to God. I want, you, I want you to think, think on that. Why, what is it that God loves to, I'm telling you, God loves to answer prayers. And when I get through teaching today, you, you should be able to please him a whole lot. But I'm going to tell you how to pray and have an effective life with it. But here's what he likes to do. He likes to answer the prayer and fill your life with joy from it. How about that? There's his kick. You say, well, what does God get out of this? I mean, what, what does he get from that? You need the fans on? You get warm? I'll, I'm going to see if I can hit that. Put it down the front. Maybe the people in the back don't want it. But Oh, apparently other people needed it. Okay. Oh, leave the back ones off. I hear you. All right. So I want to look at five things today. Remember, there's no doubt that Jesus talked about prayer here. Listen to me. And he was talking about prayer to them. They didn't get it. Like so many things. I want you to get it. But listen, while he's talking about prayer to us, he was talking about them asking things from him.
You've never asked me for anything in my name. Not one time, not one part. You understand? Know so he's made a, he says, he, when he's talking to the disciples, he's talking about asking for things, right? Well, what he's actually teaching them is a new method to pray. And what he's teaching you and I is about prayer. And he uses the word asking, if you ask anything, and that's a code word, uh, I tell you, is a code word for prayer. We, that's all over the Bible, all right? That's a code word for that. While there's a distinction being made when he's talking at the Last Supper with the people face to face about asking and praying, he said, you've asked nothing, now that's going to change. You've never asked for nothing it doesn't mean they haven't asked for anything. It means they've, asked, they've never asked for anything in his name. We know they've asked for things. I mean, who can run with anybody if somebody don't ask you for something? I mean, maybe at what time is it? He said, you've asked for nothing. It doesn't mean you have an, haven't asked. You've asked nothing from me in my name. See, that's the code. And he uses it twice. Don't he uses that in verse 23. Watch that now. And he used it in verse 24. Now watch the difference. Verse 23. In that day you will, in that day you will ask me no question. Truly, truly, I say to you, here's the, here's the point. If you ask the Father for anything, he will give it to you in my name. That, that day, we're going to talk about that in a moment. Up to now, see, up to now, you've asked for nothing in my name, Ask and you will receive. See, the key here, the key phrase is in my name. It's a prepositional phrase. I'll tell you something else. The word in in the Greek language is en. It's a preposition. And it can be used with different forms. This is the instrumental of association. In the Greek language, it's called the en plus the instrumental of association, it could be used for means or a lot of different ways associated. You've never connected with me personally in your, in, your, in your life. You've not connected with me personally. You've not connected me by asking something in association with the fact that I could deliver whatever you ask. I don't care. What you ask, if it's according to the will of God, I'm not going to give you something that's out of the will of God, but if it's in the will of God, you can ask in my name, in association with me personally. Now, they've had association, but they never used it. They've never used it with his name. It, because the, the authority is with a name. You know, you, you walk in the room, I'm the CEO. That's different than the janitor. But what's, what, what is in a name, you say? In my name. You see, he didn't say in, in, uh, in Jesus. He didn't say in Christ. He didn't say in the Lord. He said, if you ask for it in my name. Now, we know what his name is, but you see, he used the word name. He could have said, if you ask in the name of Jesus Christ. See, when I tell you how to pray, I say, in the name of Jesus Christ. Because he's trying to teach his disciples the authority that's in the name. There's no other name given among men, right? See, the name. Because what is in that name is, wow. This is that, I mean, we could be here for light years studying what's all in the name. But it's the name that carries the authority of prayer and the power and all of that. So here's the first thing. In John 16, 23, Jesus introduced the timing of the beginning of the new method to prayer. See? It has, and in that day, the word and connects us with what's been previously taught. It's a continuous conjunction. And in that day, now the, in, the word in this time is in plus a locative of time. The preposition of time. In that day, it's a prepositional phrase with emphasis on the timing of that day. That's a demonstrative, the word that is a demonstrative pronoun. It is in the English too. This is nothing new. This is a demonstrative pronoun. It's a demonstrative pronoun that means that what, what I'm talking about in that day, I've already discussed with you. 
That's a demonstrative pronoun. The word that, you know, it's either that or this, right? A demonstrative pronoun. But the demonstrative pronoun is used because it's already been discussed. And here's the secret. You, we taught you last week there is a phrase that was used in, verse, in, the, in the verses prior to that, a little while. If you still have your Bibles with you, you will see that in verse 16, a little while, and then I'll be leaving. And then verse 17, a little while, and I'll be leaving. Verse 18, a little while. Verse 19, a little while. I'm with you now, and then I'm going to leave. And then in verse 17, he tells you where he's going. I'm going back to the Father. That's why the word that is a demonstrative pronoun in that day. Do you understand what that day is? He's got to die on a cross. He's got to be buried. He's got to be raised. He's going to spend 40 days in post-resurrection appearances, and then he's going to ascend back to the Father and be seated at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. Do you understand that? Verse 17 says, he's, verse 17 says that in that day means when he goes back and is seated at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. Look at, look at verse 17. Look at how it finishes. Because I go to the Father, right? I'm here with you now. I'm going to leave. And then he goes into a whole discussion about sorrow and grief, right? And then he says, I go to the Father. That little while now has extended to what we understand historically as the death of Christ, the burial, the resurrection, the, the, the uh, post-resurrection appearances, and the ascension. Do you understand that? I go back to the Father. And now, 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 now we're ready and in that day. Do you understand that? See, that's a, that's a timing idea. And, he, and so that prepositional phrase is attached to that, explaining the timing of that. What, what, how, how will that be? What, what, what are we talking about? And so he's laid that thing out really well for you. And we explained that to you last week. Not long ago, I laid the human soul up here. No, not literally. But Ernie did. He laid his soul out there for us today. But I, I, I showed you what, what, how the human soul is made up by God. Self-conscious, conscious, mentality, volition, emotion. I said mentality has two lobes. It has a left lobe and a right lobe. I said that right lobe is what they call the heart. And I said in that heart, there are apertures. There's a frame of reference. There's a memory center. There's vocabulary. There's a belief system. There's spiritual IQ. That's where the dynamics, that's the engine that runs your life uh, on the belief systems. Here's a frame of reference. Now listen to me. I wrote this down. You will remember from last week's lesson, maybe, this was a reference. When I say something is a reference, I'm hoping that that's a frame of reference because you paid attention last week and have cycled it. Do you understand that? That's the importance of going to Bible study. The importance of Bible study is not to have somehow you think that if you go to church, you can check that off that you've been a good little person and, and somehow that God... Listen, if you don't go to church to study and learn and grow in Christ, then you might as well do what the other people do. They stay home, watch me on the internet. They don't realize if you're in 40 miles distance of me, you ought to get in that automobile and come here because of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse 25, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Sitting at home is not assembling with me. I don't care how you want to, I don't care how you want to play it down. You need the assembling of yourselves together. There's no assembly. I could, be, I could be sitting on the toilet doing this. You want to assemble with me? I don't think so. This is a bunch of foolishness 
And some of the half the half of my heart hates that whole thing. And the other half is a gratitude because it goes to places and to people that really need it who can't come. But those who can get in an audible and drive, buddy, you can drive anywhere you want to drive. It's all about choices. No, thank you. I feel better. <laughs> a little venting. A little venting. Because I go to the Father. So we understand in that day. We don't know what that means, don't we? Please tell me you know what that means. If you don't, then get it there because next time it'll become a frame of reference. I won't have to go back and do all this. All right. Because that's important. Here's the second thing. So we've cleared that one up. What does it mean in that day until now, in that day? So we know that. And the second point is in a connection between 1617 and 167. Now, I wrote both of them on your paper so you could look up at what, when, I, when I talked about 167 because I go to the Father. In John 16, 17, I go back to the Father, points back to the 16th chapter, verse 7, that says, now listen to me, this is important because these are all connected. In, in 16, 7, he said, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, that's death, burial, resurrection, ascension, that I go away. If I do not go away, the helper, that's the Paracletus ministry of the Holy Spirit, will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. Where is he going? Going to the Father. We call that the ascension and session. He's going back to the Father. And he's going to sit there on our behalf. Think about that. Everything we ever need in our life, need a high priest, he's it. Need a savior, he's it. I mean, he is everything that we need. And he sits there on a seat of authority to be sure that our, all of our needs are, are met. There is nothing that in your prayer life that you can pray according to the will of God, that he doesn't sign up off on it. I'm telling you, you ought to be, whoa. I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage. We're all looking for advantage, aren't we? I mean, if you're American, you are. That's the name of the game. One up. Gotcha. It is to your advantage. It is to your advantage. Who doesn't want an advantage? It is to your advantage that I go away. If I don't go away, the Holy Spirit won't come. And the Holy Spirit is gigantic to our life. He said, if I go away, he won't come. But if I go away, I'll send him back. And so where does he live? Where does the Holy Spirit live? Inside my body. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20. What? Don't you know that your body's become the temple of God? It's a mobile church. Your body is a mobile church. There you go. The advantage is the Paracletus New Covenant ministry of the Holy Spirit in the church age. You need to read in your spare time Hebrews 8, 9, and 10. Ernie dealt with it today. In 2 Corinthians 3, 6. He says, you want to be a competent minister of the new covenant? Who doesn't want to be that, Ernie? A competent minister? In other words, are there other kinds? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A competent minister of the new covenant. Listen to what he says. Not of the letter of the law, old covenant, but of the, but of the spirit of the new covenant. You know what he's talking about? He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Do you know what replaced the law? The Holy Spirit. You know how you get things done? You know how you obedient to God? Ministry of the Holy Spirit. Not keeping the law. Listen, walking in the Spirit, Galatians 5, 16. Walking in the Spirit, not walking by the law. Walking in the Spirit. You want to be a competent minister of the new covenant? Throw away the law and get connected with the Holy Spirit that's been sent in Jesus' place. He trumps everything. 
If you read the book of Hebrews, he's superior to angels, creation. He's superior to everything that you could think of. And he had to leave so that he could send the Holy Spirit to bring all this into fulfillment of your life. <laughs> you want joy this Christmas? I've met more people without joy this Christmas. I don't know why, but it's just, I don't know why. They're always looking for something to bring them joy from the outside. Well, if I had a better job, if I had a better husband, if I had a better wife, if I had better kids, if I had better, better, better. I can tell you how to have joy. Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit is joy. You know what kind of joy? It's the kind of joy that no matter what you're suffering, no matter what you're dealing with in life, consider it all joy, brother, when you, no matter what you fall into. That's my version of James 1. Consider it, count it. King James says, count it all joy. I like the word count because you ought, to, you ought to be keeping up with it. Next time you get sad, you ought to look at the joy list. You ought to look at your joy list. It is your joy list that brings thanksgiving to your prayer life. Oh, God, thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you. Do you know if you stopped it every time you prayed, you stop to give God thanks for all that he's been doing in your life. You'd, at least when you get my age, you go like, what was I praying about? <laughs> well, what, what did I start praying about? Jane and I have a conversation. I'll say, well, what? what? She thought, I don't know. That's the advantage of getting older. That's how to have a happy marriage if you could have just if you could just teach it. If I could bottle that and sell it, I'd be a millionaire. One advantage, one advantage to the new covenant church age ministry of the Holy Spirit involves the church age believers' prayer life. Listen to this. Romans 8:26. This is one of your advantages. Will it be to your advantage? He told you it'd be to your advantage. Okay. One advantage. In the same way the Holy Spirit helps our weaknesses. For we don't know how we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Now, I don't even know what that is because I've had groanings that were very clear in words. I'm one of those guys who gets sick. What I do is groan. I somehow or another, if I can just go, I just... And I can hear myself do that. I just felt I, I'm 100% better. I think what I'm really saying is you're still alive. I think that's what that means, but I, I'm not quite sure. He intercedes for us. Listen, he helps our weaknesses. He intercedes for us with groaning too deep for words. I, I, I don't even know what that means. Oh, I could explain it theologically. What's that mean? Too deep? Groaning too deep for words? Oh, I think we've all had that, haven't we? Here's the third thing. The great doctrinal point Jesus was teaching regarding the new method to prayer is given in the preposition, in my name. When I was with Mr. Graham, I would be asked, if I'd show up at a meeting, they would say, oh, this, uh, we have a spokesman. Uh, 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 would you open a prayer? Well, if I do... I'm going to close in the name of Jesus Christ. Ain't no way I'm going to pray to the Father. I've been told that I pray in the name of the Father, in the power of the Holy Spirit, according to the Word of God, in the name of Jesus. If I want what I'm praying for, if not, why well, stand up and pray? This beats a letter to Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. I mean, this is the real deal. I really believe when I pray that prayer, I get it. Just make room for it. The 
then they, they would become aware that when Ron's around, he's going to, he's going to nail all that stuff. Because that's, that's how you pray. So then they would catch me ahead of time. And they'd say, you know, we have a mixed group of people here. And we always have a group mix of people. No, no, I mean, we have, you know, we have this group of religious people and this group of listeners. And I say, okay, yeah, that's wonderful. That's why I'm here. No, 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 I mean... I want you to pray, but you can't, you, you, you got to make it generic. You can't do this in Jesus' name or anything. I said, well, you better give it to somebody else then. Because let me tell you, brother, I stand up and pray. I'm going to pray this prayer. Now you tell me that I got a bunch of unbelievers in here. You have no idea if you call on me what I'm going to pray. Pray. Please don't do that. Pass. I've passed a lot of times. I don't going to pray that stupid prayer. That's about how it would sound to him. I pray that prayer. You need to know how to pray and peel the paint off your walls, man. Not this goofy stuff. Don't pray because it might be offensive. I hope so. This phrase, in my name, is used two times in this phrase. It's used in verse 23 and 24. That makes it a key. It is a key to the effective prayer life of James 5, 16. The, eff the effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. I like much than I do more. I think much is more than more. I think it was, I have some more. They just going to hand me a couple of peanuts. If I say I want a much more, they hand me the bag. I don't know about your house, but they understand the difference between those two words. Here's the fourth thing. Jesus made two important doctrinal points regarding the new covenant, church age, new method to prayer. Watch this. Prayer the prayer covenant change. In that day, now we know what that means. What's, that, what's the bottom line? It go, at the ascension session of Jesus Christ, ain't it? There you go. In that day, you will ask the Father for anything, and he will give it to you in my name. Where, when? See, that's a timing. In that day. You know what day that is? That's the day that he sat down in session at the right hand of God the Father. And we know that because he already told us. I'm not making that up. Come on. Right? You, listen, this phrase, in that day, I, I, I just, because I'm not going to get to it today, it, that phrase, in that day, is used in verse 26. It's used in verse 26. Be sure to read that. It's used in verse 26. And do you remember in John, the 14th chapter, verse 12, when he talked about, when I go back to the Father, you will be engaged in greater works. You remember that? When I go back to the Father and see the right hand of God the Father, you will engage. Listen, it, do you understand? I mean, it's, it, it, if you think anything will blow your mind, think about being engaged in greater work than Jesus. The word was greater. <laughs> oh, man. Greater, greater works in John 14, 12. Greater works. In the old covenant, listen to me, in the old covenant Jewish age, the typical model prayer is Matthew 6, 9 through 13. And when you read the model prayer, you know what's missing? In my name is missing. Don't be praying that prayer no more. Huh? If you want to pray that prayer, you better add what? In my name. If Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father in heaven and you're looking for him to come back again, 
All right. In my name. In my name. Not part of the old covenant, Jewish age prayer life. Under the new covenant, Jewish age, you have John 14, 12 through 17, the 16 chapters, 20 through 24, and 26. Now we pray in the name of Jesus. You know what? We're, you know, we're because, listen, when we put it in the name of Jesus, we're connected to greater works. Greater works, greater works and miracles and everything more. Everything is wide open in the church age through your prayer life. Holy mackerel. How is it possible that you don't have a time set aside in your life every day for that kind of prayer? How is that possible? I mean, you ought to set that aside. You ought to go to our website. If you need something to pray about, go to our website and pull it down. Get connected with prayer groups. Come to our men's prayer group. We'll fill your, your schedule up. We pray. Listen, when those men get through around that table where we're praying, we got 50 things. <laughs> my, my. My, my. Listen, not only, not only was, a, was there a covenant change in prayer, but there was a model change in prayer. Until now, you've asked nothing in my name. So he gives you three promises. Watch this now. Here's the model and the promises connected to the model. The believer asking in my name. Listen, in verse 23, it says, and God will give it. If you ask for it in his name, according to his will, right? In his name, authority business, he, God will give it to you. <laughs> I love this so much, I just can't stand it. Believers, listen, in verse 24, listen to this now, pay attention. Believers asking in, the, in my name, he says, that believer will receive. See, there's a difference. In verse 23, God will do it. In verse, 20, in verse 24, the believer will receive it. Do you see the exchange? Oh, please tell me you see the exchange. Here I am. I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus. I'm going to send it up to the Father. The Father's going to send it back to me, right? There's going to be an exchange up there. It passes the, the will of God test, and it's mailed back to me. And listen, listen, that exchange right there is going to bring great joy. That's the third thing. When the believer receives the answer to prayer, God's joy is fulfilled in his soul. Listen, your prayer goes up, just like it's supposed to, boom, in my name, Father, it receives up there, and it, there's an exchange made. And you receive it back, right? You get the prayer to answer. When it comes back, the Holy Spirit, is the Holy Spirit here or there? Is the Holy Spirit in heaven or here? He's in my soul. He's right here in my life. When it comes back, one of the great, one of the great fruit of the Holy Spirit is what? Joy. Come on. There's a change made up there. The prayer is answered. That's enough to get me tap dancing. Da, 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 da. I got the prayer answered. But no, when I get it back, the Holy, the, the, when the answer comes back to my life, the Holy Spirit produces joy in the fullest. I mean, not just a little joy, uh, like a hiccup. Uh. No, no, no. I'm talking about a smile on my face I can't get rid of. Joy. Joy is fulfilled by God Almighty through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The moment that prayer comes back, boom, happy days are here again. Well, I wish I had a chance to talk about the rare paraphrastic I know you're hungry. So let me conclude. 
because I know right now I've got you. I dealt, when I got through dealing with a paraphrastic, your eyes would be glazed. 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 Now watch. I want to show you. Let me close. Old covenant. Here are, here are the things that were not changed. Personal sin must be confessed before prayer. Psalm 66, 18. Prayer is addressed to the Father with thanksgiving. Matthew 6. Prayer is given according to the will of God. Right? I gave you scripture. Now, pay, you got that? that those are, that's standard. They, now the changes on that. But here are the two important changes that's got to be in your prayer life. And when they are, you're going to get them. <laughs> I mean, get a hold, Bubba, because when he starts answering prayer in your life, you're going to go bunkers. And when you get prayers answered, not only are you going to get the prayer answered, but he's going to put the joy at its max in your soul. Right? Joy fulfilled. Not a little bit, not a hiccup, man. Overflowing. Overflowing. And you know what? When you have that kind of experience, you want to go back to that fountain and drink. That's a drinking hole that I'm going back to. Here are the two changes. Prayer must be addressed in the name of Jesus Christ. And prayer must be in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the two changes, right? Because he's seated at the right hand of God the Father. You got that? Well, this is one powerful. Let me tell you, there's a good reason why people call all over the, from the world to have this church pray. We get prayer requests from all over the world. And they're smart. Somehow they figured out that we're a praying church. Let me tell you, this is a church I don't want to be praying on any deal in my life. I am so thankful to be your pastor and know that you pray for me and mine. Let us pray. Well, Heavenly Father, here we are. We're going to throw one up there to you. We've got Donna Hall out here, Father, that needs comforting by the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God in her soul. And out of that comes this joy fulfilled and answered prayer that spreads to other people. They want to know, how do you have the joy in such a time like these? And Bill Simmerl out there, any day waiting to be told your wife has passed. And he knows and he prays, Father, give her the passing. Answer that prayer, Father, and give him the joy of the answer. Give him the joy. We thank you for these that have come our way today, Father, with us both by automobile and by internet. I pray the Holy Spirit would minister the truth of this lesson. The new method to prayer. What has been added to the old covenant that makes prayer effective in the church? We've told them as clear as we know how today, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.